three, two, one. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and listening and watching the three of us here. We have um, people from all over the world. We have Charlotte Kerbs from Finland. We have Daryl Craig Harris, my partner and cohort with Music Matters podcast, and normally the guy that's there in front, and I'm the one behind the scenes pushing all the buttons and things. But today we're doing a takeover, and now you've got moi, that's Nigel, and I'm in southwest France. Welcome, guys. What a lovely privilege to see you both. How are you all doing? Doing great. I'm cheers from Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, and so nice to be here with you. <laughs> and and it isn't, <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? Isn't it? And, and it's amazing with the technology of the internet that we can be in all these different time zones. So one questions whether time is a constant because we're in three different places at the same time. <laughs> but we're here today because I'm very excited, and I, I wanted to have the chance to talk to you both about your upcoming new single and your upcoming new album mm -hmm. uh, under the title of Charlotte Curbs and the Strays, the Muscle Shoals All-Stars. Wow. Um, I mean, Muscle Shoals in Alabama. Whoa, that's fantastic. The Fame Recording Studios. And it, I think it's really important that we get a little bit of background on both of you. Um, and I'm going to just say a little bit and then i'm going to lead that into each one of you to sort of hopefully complete it for me and we'll go with ladies first so charlotta curbs and the i mean what a lovely lady um charlotta curbs is well-known singer songwriter based in finland and she's released uh, several albums with many known groups um as a solo artist in finland and sweden actually and she works with many, many different musical genres, strongly rooted in soul, jazz, and Nordic folk music. She works as a session singer all across Europe and the USA, and also composes theatre music. Wow. <laughs> so I hopefully that's a good lead in for you. So tell us a little bit more about, I mean, where do you actually live? <laughs> Yeah, thank you for that introduction. I think you covered <laughs> uh, me quite well. And uh, yeah, at the moment I'm based in uh, Finland, in the middle of Finland, in a small village called Leplax on the Finnish west coast. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I quite recently moved back here to my grandparents' old house, actually. Oh. So really... Um, the past few years has really been coming back to the roots and uh, finding myself in the world and also in the music uh, in my creative process. <laughs> but that's an ongoing journey, <laughs> of course, that I am on <laughs> right now and I'm happy to be on. But uh, yeah, I'm based in here in Finland and... Uh, Working um, as a composer, freelance musician with uh, many different projects, uh, including theater music, uh, composing, but now focusing, of course, on Charlotta and the Strays and our upcoming record release. <laughs> Very <Right. Well>, excited. <laughs> you know, you're a lovely soul and very modest and you know, everybody says that about you. And, um, you know, we really very much appreciate um, your creative talent and love as a person and all that you give. Now, let's move on to my big buddy, my mate. We've <laughs> known each other for a, quite some time now. Uh, we've been involved in different bits and pieces and different projects. But the thing about Daryl Gray Harris is he's difficult to keep up with. He's doing this, he's doing that, he's doing everything else. I'm just going to say a few things, but my list is just going to be a small part of really what he is. But I'm very privileged and proud to tell you a little bit about him. He's a globally known pro bassist. He's a composer. He's actually a sports illustrated photographer. Wow. And, of course, he's a producer, 
He's based in Las Vegas, and he's spent uh, several years with uh, the well-known company Cirque du Soleil as the basis for their proper, uh, so their, their popular Mystere uh, show in Las Vegas and, of course, around the world. Um, he's a percussionist, uh, and he was doing lots of things for Cirque du Soleil in Tokyo Disneyland, I believe, uh, with a show called Zed. Wow. It's like... It's like Zedai, you know. And uh, he's also toured, recorded with Billy Preston, Gary Puckett, Frankie Avalon, uh, Phyllis Hyman, Albert Lee. Uh, he's also performed with the Queen's Symphonic Rock Spectacular in London, Bruce in the USA, uh, Legends in Concert, and and several well well unknown other artists and he's got one of those little sort of black books you know i'm gonna owe you some money nigel i think <laughs> yeah you know so, uh page 35 <laughs> b people under you know so it's like welcome to the show and it is a privilege to at least for this time to sit in your chair and it's a big seat to fill my good friend daryl how are you doing I'm very good. Thank you so much for all that. It's a, it's a mouthful. I, it's funny. I was thinking about that today. Like people ask me, well, what do you do for a living? I'm like, well, <laughs> it's kind of a long story. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of, I don't know if I have attention deficit. <laughs> you know, or, I don't know. I'm a bit schizophrenic with my work uh, adventures. Um, but Oof, I, try, yeah. I try to have fun. And, and fortunately through my different adventures, it brings me to meeting people like you both who are both amazing people and amazingly creative and that's been one of the kind of my great joys. I always say, like, I, I'm really an experience collector, not a money collector, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I guess that's served me pretty well over my life. So it's, yeah, it's been fun. And the Muscle Shoals adventure, um, our new album, Muscle Shoals Sessions with Charlotte Curbs and the Strays, is, has been a whole really very refreshing thing. Um, Charlotte really wrote most of the material. I contributed here and there, but it's sort of a labor of love for both of us. So we're proud to kind of launch that out to the world as, as soon as it comes out in March. And that's fantastic. Is that, that's, is that mid March? I understand. Yeah, that's what it's slated for. And we have a single coming out, um, come what may, which is one of the songs off the album. Um, it's, I believe that's going to be February 24th. That's going to be released through uh, Rama sound records, which is based in Scandinavia. Well, um, I have to be like, Say to everybody, na 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 na. I've actually had the privilege of listening to sort of the final cut and edit. Um, absolutely wonderful. Oh my goodness me! And in muscles, in Fame Recording Studios, in in Muscle Shoals, Charlotte, what was that like for you? You you know, it just it's like different worlds. Tell me, I mean, where did you? I guess you flew over to. What Nashville, Houston? What, what, tell us a little bit about what happened. So you got on the plane, and where did you <laughs> land, and how did you meet up with Daryl, and what did you do, uh, and what was it like walking into Fame Recording Studios? Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's really an amazing story. Um, I think it was one of the times when Daryl was visiting me in Finland. We sat at my kitchen table and mm -hmm. talking about coming plans. And uh, we were talking about fame and the documentary that was made, oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the Muscle Shoals documentary, which I saw twice already. And uh, <laughs> and uh, Daryl told me that he's been there for a couple of sessions. And uh, yeah, and then a few months later, <laughs> I found myself sitting on a plane heading to Ooh. Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, so um, Daryl and I met up in Nashville uh, and we spent um, three days there just to oh. land and um, get uh, focused uh, on, the, on the studio session. Uh, and uh, and did, it, but by the way, did you go to the Grand Old Opry by, by any chance? <laughs> yeah, tell them that story. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, we were doing 
great job as a as tourist <laughs> but yeah um obviously grand old opry <laughs> and uh yes really really great experience and um um walking into the fame recording studio uh was like i i was crying <laughs> when we turned into the parking lot and uh walking in there was such a, a strong experience for me like a spiritual experience also mm -hmm. because um mm -hmm. uh that was uh, also like coming back to my roots uh in a way uh because all so many of my musical heroes that has have inspired me to uh come to where I am today musically uh, mm -hmm. have started uh, out there in Muscle Shoals, Alabama in that uh, very studio uh, so um, yeah a really, so it really was like so, <laughs> so it was like visiting a musical temple and there's not many of them and, and where music is great great music has really been made and so many you're right so many famous people have chosen this particular recording studio to record music and they could have gone anywhere in the world but the vibe as i understand it from in fact i've been privileged to have some private conversations with daryl to some degree about his experiences and it's this and then like you both of you watching the documentary and and realizing that the vibe itself which is this supposed intangible it's such an easy four-letter word isn't it to say yet it encompasses so much in feelings that is something that sparks the creative wellspring within a musician to perhaps bring and draw out the best in them and um, one of the, the things I, I've always loved about Daryl, because he has these lovely little sort of cliches, and he says that Muscle Shoals or Fame Studios, recording studios in Alabama, allows you to add the salt and pepper to your music, which is what's really, really important. And that's what gives it that sort of X factor and it stands out. And Daryl, for you, it was how many times was it? Was it your third time or what? Tell us about that. Well, actually, um, I have another friend in Finland, um, my friend Guge, who is a film director, music video director, songwriter. And it was a kind of a similar conversation, actually. I was at his house in Helsinki and we were talking about places to record because he wanted to go do an album. And um, we were just kind of brainstorming and, and we had both seen the film Muscle Shoals and we both loved that film. And I was like, you know, we should see if we can go to Muscle Shoals because I didn't know if it was still open or what the situation was. So we kind of came up with that idea. We contacted them. We set up a deal and, and with same thing. We flew into Nashville and recorded with him for over three days. And I really hit it off with Rodney Hall, who's who owns it now. Rick Hall is, is a gentleman that was featured in the film. Rick was Rodney's father. Mm. Um, he was st still alive when we were there with Gugay, but he had just had some some uh, medical procedures. And then, um, so yeah, so we did that album. It was great, really great experience. Amazing musicians because we use session guys, which is are the same guys that we used on our album, um, our our mm. our Shark Lot of Curbs album. Oh, right. And um, yeah, and um, so we got to know those guys, Will McFarlane, Peter Levin, keyboards. Yeah. We actually had Rodney on keyboards with us, with Gugay, um, and on oh. a, another another guy down there, and, um, mm -hmm. and Justin, the drummer. Um, so yeah, so that's how that happened. It was kind of the same thing. We were talking about Muscle Souls <laughs> with, with <laughs> Charlotta, and I said, well, you know, actually, I know those guys. I know Rodney, the owner. I'm like, let me contact them. Let's see what we can work out. And uh, we had yeah. some help. Uh, we had a there's a Finnish arts fund to help us out with the, with the recording um, uh, financing, and that was awesome. Um, very supportive in Finland for the arts, which is a huge win for everybody mm -hmm. out there for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Yay. so that's kind of how that. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. So yeah. um, we were able to use the studio musicians that are amazing that are on this album the guitar player yeah. who played with bonnie Raitt for several years delbert oh. mcclinton keyboard player peter levin um was with greg allman he, he's currently with the blind boys of alabama 
um, Justin, mm-hmm. the drummer, has played with everybody as well down there. So it's just a really, it's like a family. And we had our our, our ladies, um, Marie, and yeah. uh, who were the ladies? Um, Charlotte, uh, uh, our background singers. Yeah, Marie and Cindy. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing ladies. Amazing. Oops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sweethearts and, and just, I mean, just really epic. So yeah, that was like, it was, it's a spiritual thing down there. And they talk about that in the film, the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger talks mm-hmm. about that, mm-hmm. that you go down there and you feel, you feel um, not only the, the, um, the presence of, of that spirit in the room, but you also feel the energy of the city and the river. And it's very spiritual. Right. So that, what I term as that vibe, it's a, it's, a, I think you say it really well and that's, it's, it ex- you ex- both sort of experience a sort of spiritual thing absolutely and, um, for for musicians regardless of their fame and some of them have been famous for a long time they still walk into that place and it's the hallowed halls you know and uh, they they recognize it as all musicians really do for that wonderful wonderful vibe now i've also had the opportunity to see a little bit of clips of videos of you um, at Muscle Shoals, and uh, it looked really, really exciting um, to me. Uh, I'm watching this going, oh, fantastic. And I want to get into some of the processes <laughs> of that experience. But, of course, we need to really fill in some details about the music that was being created and we've got the new album, um, uh, sorry, the new album and the new single. Uh, and I understand that the single is also on the new album. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. I'll come what may. And the album is titled uh, Muscle Shoals Sessions. It seemed to be the obvious name. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let me get this right. So the album's called Charlotte Curbs and the Strays. Uh, and that's the uh, the Muscle Shoals All Stars. Is that correct? Well, it's actually yeah. So it's it's the band is Charlotta Curbs and the Strays, and the album is actually going to be titled Muscle Shoals Sessions. Oh, okay. um, yeah, right. and then the band um, that we used, I kind of call them the All Stars because to me they really are, and they've yeah. those are kind of unsung heroes, you know, as session musicians. And the session musicians have sort of always been that way, but those yeah. guys in particular really, really like we didn't have to do much with them. We literally yeah. put the music in front of them. We play the song once, maybe twice. That was it. And you don't get that. That's a very rare thing. So, yeah, that just speaks, Charlotte, doesn't it, to the professionalism that you surround, you know, the professionalism of music and musicians that you're surrounded by in that place. The single, Come What May, Charlotte, what's it about? What was the inspiration for the song? and its lyrics. Just give us a little bit of a taste of what it's about. Mm, Well, uh, it's a song about gratitude. Uh, Mm. Basically a love song. (laughs) And uh, I think uh, like uh, every person that we meet in our lives is like a teacher to us and a Mm -hmm. master. And um, this song is inspired by a particular person that came into my life and just uh, made me realize so much, many things about myself and about life. And uh, I wanted to write this uh, song of, uh, of gratitude mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, about gratitude being a, a foundation that we may have our challenges in life, uh, come what may, I will mm. still forever be grateful and have my love for mm. this person that uh, brought so much life uh, light into my life. <laughs> so, oh, well, thank you for sharing that. That's really, really beautifully said. And I, I just sometimes I'm, I'm uh, maybe. I'm going to use what I feel, and that is I'm in awe because I, I I also see this beautiful connection and synergy between the two of you. There's one video on YouTube where the, the two of you are just sitting outside in the garden somewhere. <laughs> is, that, is that at your, uh, Charlotte, that's at your place, right? 
Yes, <laughs> that's in my my garden here in, oh, in my so, yeah. one of it, one of our many many tea sessions. That, right, <laughs> that, 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 but actually that video important um, part of our working process <laughs> actually. Yeah. Musicians. And I should say that video you're talking about, Nigel, that's actually, I think that was the first time we've ever, we ever played together. That was literally a jam wow. session. Wow. That was just, wow. and we, we were playing that and instantly, I think we both felt like, oh, wow, <laughs> there's something here. Because right. that was like, it was just, it was really spontaneous and we're just having fun. That was, yeah. you know, we, bar we borrowed a bass for me and we just kind of set up out of the, in the, and actually that's a beautiful location too, I should say. But uh, yeah, that was just kind of a magical wow. moment, actually. That's why I kind of put that on our Instagram page. And I said, this is actually where this all started. And that is where that all started. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, it speaks of absolute volumes. It's so beautifully authentic. And, and, and it really comes across. And I don't know how many times I've watched it. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going <laughs> along and I'm, I can't sing but I'm, I'm i'm mouthing you know and, and sort of so i'm it, it actually makes my body move with the music and that's something that is a benchmark for me about good music that makes me feel good and it struck me and i, I at that time honestly i got excited i went i hope this continues on <laughs> and, and and it has now let's talk about this the upcoming album in mid-march and I want to just go into some of the tracks, not not in any order, all right? But um, I have to say, when I, my wife's peer uh, and I, um, I, I said to her, come and listen to this. And she said, okay. And she knows me because, and um, Daryl knows my background. I've listened to a lot of music um, over my life. And so, you know, I, I should become... say that you're actually you were the editor in chief and co-founder, I should say, of Jazz in Europe magazine, just so people know that a bit, a bit about your background. And then you have a huge background beyond that, establishing radio stations. And so I'm not I'm just saying that so people know, not because of us. <laughs> oh, well, then, well, thank you. I'm just sort of, yeah. uh, but today, the spotlight, I want it to be on you, too. I appreciate uh, but that. Thank, but thank you. And I heard um every step i take and i'm like mm. o m g and i i i said peer 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 come and listen to this and i've got some good speakers you know good monitor speakers uh in my home studio and you can see some of my equipment behind me and uh okay i will do a little plug okay personal plug you know one of the things I absolutely adore, do, love doing is storytelling. Um, and I do that through voiceovers and that sort of thing. So um, it's uh, something I've got more and more interested in over the years. I've done it for 20 or 20, 25 years. But, um, but, and thank you for mentioning that. But let's go back to every step I take. Charlotta, wow. Thank you so much for that beautiful song. Tell us some of the background, the inspiration. What is it? What does it mean? Well, thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, actually, every step I take is uh, our first uh, songwriting collaboration with Daryl. Oh, the uh, first? Yes. <clears throat> you mean you had a cup of tea in the garden, <laughs> jammed, and then you went and, did, and produced this <laughs> premiere song as your first one. Is that correct? <laughs> well, that tells something about <laughs> the magic in our duo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, please continue. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, you Daryl sent me a simple demo uh, with some ele your electric guitar playing. <laughs> you had some rough idea for the song, and um, and then that inspired me to write this uh, story about um well sort of finding one's way home uh and that can mean different things like a home to a physical place or home to oneself uh mm -hmm. to find yeah. 
find uh, one's way back home. Uh, and um, well, actually, we released it uh, once already. Uh, we recorded it remotely. Uh, Daryl, you used your session mus musician friends there in Vegas, and I recorded the vocals and guitars here in Finland. Um, but now we also had the wonderful opportunity to record it in uh, Muscle Shoals and yeah. play with, with uh, those wonderful, wonderful musicians. Uh, and uh, Wow, okay. It's, it's and <laughs> It, it, I kind I kind of felt I kind of felt we did the um the, the tracks the trading tracks and and we did really well I think the song came out well but I told mm -hmm. we were talking about doing muscle shows I said you know what I think we could do more with that song and I felt like we should that that and also um uh, one of the other songs Janice um, we mm -hmm. had done both of those remotely and we did well but I felt like I wanted to treat those with that southern authentic vibe that we got down there. And yeah. I think I think that's we really got to where we needed to go with those songs, and that's kind of how how that happened. So, mm. Daryl, where would you? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm almost like, don't ask this, you know. Because, oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, uh, when I was an uh, an editor, uh, I often had this constant battle with the music industry wanting to pigeonhole music into a particular convenient box title. Right, yeah. Right? Yet the general public, we, we know in the music industry that that's, they, they, re, they need some support from us to sort of give them some indication as what that might sound like. So, you know, I've got my own sense of what your music is, but what, what do you feel if you had to put it under some sort of labels, Daryl, what would you call it? Or what would you say that the music genres are? Well, what I would say to that, and, and, I, and I get that, and I get why people need to do that, because it helps mm. programmers, it helps radio people and that kind of mm. thing. But, um, but you know, I, I think to me, like, I really look more to our influences, which was <laughs> like Aretha, it was Ada James. I know those are the same influences <laughs> that many of them that Charlotta had. And I and to me, they're soul R and B soul music, um, you know. And yeah, we're a bunch of white guys and girls <laughs> doing it, but I think we bring our own flavor to it. I, I kind of told I I kind of joked to Charlotte about having that sweet Southern Finnish soul music. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I think that's kind of where we ended up. We ended up on our own sort of our own lane, you know, with with a yeah. big nod, bit, with a big nod to our influences and to and to the people that actually had recorded her muscle shoals. Cause I think if you go there, you know, why would you go there to do a straight pop record? I think it's, you want to kind of soak in that soul. We have the ladies singing background that have, they have a Southern accent in their backgrounds. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. You hear it, you hear that, you hear the, you know, the fried chicken, the catfish, all the whole vibe down there. <laughs> it's all, it's all, it's all there. And you're going to hear that in the record. And that's what exactly what we wanted. You know, we could do a pop thing and we actually ha are going to have another single coming out with, in a completely different genre <laughs> that we can't talk about too much right now. OK, but but um, but so that's yeah. kind of like secret, secret squirrel at the moment. It's a secret it? little thing that that's going to yeah, be okay. very, right. it's going to okay. be very <laughs> exciting. Yeah. But anyway, but I, I think with this record, it's it's that sweet Southern Finnish soul music. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Oh, I tell you, what, I, I love it. And Charlotte how do you you know you've got i know you're very well loved and liked and appreciated in your home country this music that you're now doing with daryl and how have you had a chance to sort of the two of you play some of that in finland and if so how do you feel it's been accepted mm. Yeah, we've done a, uh, some duo shows uh, oh, with right. Daryl here in, in Finland already. And uh, and we also have an upcoming record release uh, tour here in Finland. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, the reception has, has been really, really good. And uh, um, yeah, we talked with Daryl also like several times after our gigs we noticed we played at some 
uh, bars in my town, <laughs> local bars. And, uh, well, you know, the bar gigs, people come there to talk and drink. It's it's more focus on the beer, <laughs> mostly. And that's okay. That's totally fine. But um, uh, we noticed that uh, the people have been very quiet and listening oh, <laughs> to <okay>. us. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a very special thing and uh, yeah. very special experience. And I think that tells a lot. <laughs> oh, we talked about that. Yeah, because yeah, uh, we played uh, yeah. <laughs> one. Well, I don't mean to stop on you. But one of the clubs we did was the Black Sheep in Jakobstad, which is near uh, where um, Charlotte lives. And it was a big open terrace gig. And it was actually, I wouldn't say sold out, but it was very full. And um, and I, I noticed as we're playing, I'm like, you know what? There's nobody talking. Everybody is listening. And yeah. I told her later, I said, that is a very rare thing. That's a very yeah. rare gift. And I'm not saying that because of me, but I think it's because of her voice. Mm-hmm. And she's a really great communicator through song. And that that's a that's a gift that a lot not everybody has. So that that was something that struck me the first time I heard her. She did a, a television show that a friend of mine um, produced called "Him Alive" on on Yuli, which is sort of the Finnish BBC. Okay. And um, they go into your home and they do an interview. So she's doing the interview in Finnish. So I'm like, okay, you know. And she's like, she's a pretty girl. Okay, cool. And then she started singing, and I was like, wow. <laughs> and she sang in English, and she sung in great English and super soulful and that's how we actually that's how i first knew of of her um but that having that gift of being able to really communicate to an audience is you know i've done a lot of gigs we all have that's a very rare thing so i you know i saw you charlotta just you know your vocal palette is so colorfully wide and I saw you just, I, I don't know whether it was sort of Nordic vocal song, but on this bridge, you know, and, and it's like, I'm like, that was captivating, I have to say. And I thought, okay, Muscle Shoals All-Stars, I must say to Daryl, why don't you do Charlotte and the Curbs and the Strays, the bridge sessions? you know (laughs) or maybe you know in the car park sessions or something because it it just i thought i was like whoa this is a really you've got a real gift charlotta your voice is is and i i thank the universe for um bringing that gift of creativity to you and the marriage that um, uh, I think that these are my words, but when the two of, or you express, Charlotta, that when you're in this garden having the tea session, the first one, is that you both feel that connection between the two of you. And it, and it really comes out with the support of other musicians in those tracks that I've heard so far. And, you know, uh, in relationship to your voice, uh, Charlotta, I think it's really demonstrated in the sort of a cappello style of glorious. Yeah. Mm. You know, and, and it's like, oh, wow. So glorious, there's not much to say about the word, the, the track glorious, because it, it speaks about the word and everything that um, that can mean. But do you want to add anything for yourself as the, I guess, the songwriter? What is what is glorious? You tell everybody what glorious meant for you. Mm. Uh, yes, thank you so much <laughs> first for for your kind words and really touched my heart. Um, yes, glorious. Uh, uh, I I knew that I wanted to do an a cappella tune with the wonderful background singers there in in uh, Muscle Shoals, and. Uh, I was also like uh, while writing these songs for the EP and putting it all together, I thought a lot about like what kind of message do I want to bring out to the world and what do the world need right now and what do Mm. I need to say? And um, mm, I think overall, 
the songs is much about light and love and belief <laughs> and uh, I think glorious is a song about all that uh, about uh, letting letting in the light and letting out the light that we all have <laughs> and um, maybe it was partly also a, like a support song that I needed for myself <laughs> at that time mm -hmm. um, the, the situation in the world is what it is and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I maybe needed to remind myself also that uh, we are glorious in our own light. We we just have yeah. to uh, remember to let it out and not dim that light, <laughs> but shine. Yeah, it. allowed it to shine. Yep. Yes. It's interesting because you know my tenure so far in the music industry, um, and I've heard so much different forms of music. And I've heard what I call commercial music. Now, I'm not going to label Glorious as commercial, but I'm going to contradict myself and say it is commercial because it's a song that's right for now. And regardless of a personal perspective on what faith means for an individual, um, whether you celebrate an individual God or the collective universal, the source, or all of the names that people have. Faith is a vital component or um, hope in, in, in every single one of us as sentient beings. So to me, you hit the nail on the head. And again, um, you know, not to appear to give you, you know, brownie points. Well done uh, for that. Moving on um, to, I think it's Backpack Blues. Daryl, what a wicked baseline, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. It's actually I, funny. So I, yeah. I should tell I should tell the story because actually yeah. that wasn't on our original list of songs. Okay. That was actually a last minute add on. And um, I, we had time. We'd finished the first five songs pretty quickly. And I said, you know, I just talked to Charlotte. I said, you know, we should do another song. And I said, maybe like a blues song. And then she mentioned the I, a backpack, which we had played um, at the duo, I believe. Right, Charlotte? Um yes. And, and I was like, oh, so we literally like we wrote the chart in two minutes, three minutes <laughs> or however long. And, and we did it. And I think we did two in takes. between teacups that basically, you know, well, this is yeah, this is actually at Muscle Shoals. We're in the studio. Oh, okay. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, we right. still, yeah, I'm like, we still have time and we should maybe we should do another song. So, yeah, Will Will McFarlane, our band leader, guitar player there, um, he was like, yep, let's do it totally awesome attitude he sat down with charlotta and, and wow. she showed him that the the changes he wrote a quick chart copied it boom and we did it <laughs> so that's a i think that was a second take we probably could have kept the first one but we 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 let it percolate a little bit into the second take and that's the song so isn't it incredible how you hear through the years you know people that you know they got this grammy that award this award and that award and they're interviewed and they they don't have to prove anything to anybody anymore. So then the interviewer says, tell me about that number one hit that has been on the charts for 26 weeks. <laughs> and they go, yeah, that was the first or second take. And it just was spontaneous. It you know, just came right. together. And I've yeah. noticed that. I've noticed that as well over the years. I used to play with the champs, the group that did tequila. Yeah, the 50 yeah, song. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, yeah, that was a And that one. was that was the story with that song. That was actually their break song. And yeah. <laughs> when they were playing live gigs, and they're like, well, let's, we should just throw that on the record. And of course, that ends up being the career making. But I've heard that. I think the, the good lesson or the big lesson in all that is sometimes the universe gives you a gift and you need to stay out of the way and honor yeah. that. 
<laughs> and I've but, learned that. I've learned that over the years. Like, shut up, appreciate the moment, and go absolutely. for it. Absolutely. You know, um, I you know, here's a confessional. Um throughout my you know, I look pretty young for my 63 years. But, uh, I do my best. I because of you know my particular personality um makeup i've struggled because i've been a perfectionist you know and i've wanted everything to yep. be perfect and i i've gone into situations where um I, that's overridden my creativity and my spark and my vibe and i've sort of blocked the universe and energy in something you know i reflect back and go, oh what a plonker i was because i just should have just let it go and there are times when i've walked out and somebody said oh come back and let's tell oh, for goodness sake let's just do one more please and i've gone oh well, okay you know and i walked in and i'm, I'm actually relaxed now because mm -hmm. i've kind of got that perfectionist thing out of my head and that's been what's been used I'm well, talking about voiceover, you know. Right, and we talked about that because one of, one of the songs, um, actually, um, Eagle, was, oh, no, no, actually, I, I remember back up, Glorious, we had actually, she had recorded that as a demo uh, for the ladies, the track that you hear her vocal, and they built the background vocals around that, these ladies, Marie and, and, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> that's Cindy, That's Cindy. And Marie. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I keep forgetting. Um, they built the background vocals around that song. It was them. Like we we sat there and we watched them do this and create magic um, with based on what Charlotta had already recorded. And the idea in our minds was that Charlotta was going to come back and re-record the lead vocal. And when we came back the next day to do that, the engineer Wes, who's awesome, uh, Wes was like, you know what? I think you should leave it. I like the vocal. <laughs> he goes, I don't see anything wrong with that vocal. And I, and I, and I looked at Shalab and I said, you know, that's valid. And so we kept the, the demo. That's actually the demo vocal on Glorious for, for the lead. And that's, you know, again, like if you, sometimes you could perfect the soul right out of the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you need, guilty you know, as yeah. charged and we yeah. all are we all are because we're <laughs> yeah. all perfectionists we're all we did none of yeah. us got here doing what we're doing by by being sloppy yeah. but the thing is sometimes the actual gold the gold and the the spice is in the little imperfections and when you try to take too much out of that it can become lifeless um yeah, that's the same thing of, same thing in photography like sometimes mm -hmm. it's the moment that's the more important thing, not the technical stuff around it. Yeah. And that's very true about recording. You have to allow a magic to happen. You have yeah. to hire really good people and allow them to do what they do, which is exactly what we did at Muscle Shoals. Those guys are all years and decades of experience. Mm -hmm. So the best thing you can do is stay out of the way <laughs> and, and give them, true, give, yeah. yeah, give them guidance. Let them know this is, this is the, our ideas, but we want you to do what, you, what, what, what you hear. And I think what we found with those guys, everybody that worked on that session was extremely happy because they were allowed to create. And I didn't want to put handcuffs on anybody. I want them to do what they do best. Right. Yeah. Well done because that um, came to an end. And your feelings on that, Charlotte? Yeah, very well said, Daryl. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that this session was for me such a great lesson in that also to letting that inner perfectionist go and um gi give her a vacation <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh i realized so strongly there that it makes no sense like for me focusing on trying to achieve like sounding good because these sound these guys uh, these musicians playing make me sound good <laughs> and yeah. I, all I have to do is just relax and let it happen and be in the moment and trust <laughs> and it yeah. was a, such a magical great lesson for me in in that and I'm forever grateful <laughs> oh, well both of you congratulations for both saying that so well and and just to add to it and b bring it back to a full circle I know myself when I'm looking at you know, 
vocal tracks or voice tracks with peaks and de-breathing and de-essing and all of these things, you know, I can become what might be perceived as alienly retentive. And I've realized that sometimes even something like that, you don't de-breath the hell out of something because people breathe in between things and uh, just the hearing that. And I've always loved that. And and that leads me on, Charlotte, to wanting to really be in, I'm really interested to know what the inspiration is between, uh, sorry, behind the song Janice. Could you share that with us? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a song uh, and as a tribute to one of my big musical heroes, uh, Janice Joplin. Uh, oh good I thought it was but I didn't want to say <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, yeah it was actually uh, on Christmas Eve like uh, one one year ago uh, that I sat by myself uh, after all the Christmas celebrations and went through my vinyl records and I oh, found okay. uh, I found a Janice Pearl record one of my favorites uh, and I realized that that uh, how uh, like how important she has been uh, mm. for me and my music. Like I started mm. <clears throat> uh, listen to uh, 60s, 70s psychedelic rock music, and Janice also when I was 14, 15 discovered that, and uh, uh, like um, that her attitude and her freedom in music and uh, that's like a, a lack of boundaries <laughs> in the music uh set the foundation for me really uh yeah she was very free I, wasn't she and, uh, yeah so uh i just uh, felt that i wanted to <laughs> to write a, a tribute to her and a th thanksgiving to her hmm. well again i I, I commend you both and everybody else that's on that track as well as all of the others because the it's like a really well-honed family that's come together, um, all excellent within their own individual rights, but the the cake that you baked was all of the right ingredients, you know, and it's very, very tasty and all people i encourage them to look out for it get it where you can um take it and turn everything else off except the speakers and the music and just immerse yourself in this album um as well as the single which is which is on the album um daryl where are we able how are we going to access all of this and and how are we going to know more about you oh sorry charlotta curbs and the strays and their music how share with everybody how that's going to happen well um yeah all the usual outlets that we know of um itunes iHeartRadio, spotify so streaming and also available for purchase um we have cds that we're um doing although cds have not there maybe they're not quite as popular as they used to be, but we like to have something that physical in our hands for, especially for shows, for live shows. Mm. And we might even do an LP, a vinyl, but we, we've talked oh. about that. that. That might happen yeah. as well. Um, yeah. So we have our website. It's Charlotta Curbs and the strays.com. And that's um, social media as well. Just for Facebook, Instagram, um, Charlotta Curbs and the strays. And um, the label we were fortunate to connect with um, is based in Finland, but they have this distribution. Um, well, it's global, but uh, but Finland, Scandinavia, you know, um, that's Rama Sound Records with our friend Raban. Raban's a special guy because he is not only a label owner, but he also books shows and has for oh. several years uh, with lots of major artists. He brings artists over from the States that are many mm. that are, are very well known artists and has done that for years. And he really, um, Charlotta connected with him and he heard our music and he, uh, he felt kind of fell in love with what we're doing and he likes the project. Oh, he knows nice. the muscle souls story, which meant a lot to him as well. 
Um, we might even be able to get some of the Muscle Shoals over for some summer shows or, or some of the Muscle Shoals musicians because uh, oh. we're talking about that. We'll see. But yeah. we also have yeah, some yeah. fabulous, fabulous musicians in Finland that we have worked with um, that are going to join us for shows coming up on our tour March and April. And those shows are going to be in Helsinki and kind of around that area. And then we have some shows up also, up, uh, I think, Jakobstad, the Music Conservatory. So we have some music workshops we're going to be doing uh, there. Mm. Also workshops uh, possibly in Sweden coming up. So there's a whole bunch of stuff happening. And, and basically our thing is, I mean, not only about us, but we like, I know personally, I love meeting musicians from other places. That was the whole idea behind the Strays part of our name is okay. because like, you know, we have our, our duo, our core group, me and Charlotta but we also want to interact and play with other musicians. So if we go to oh, Sweden, man. if we go to Sweden, we're going to find the best people that we can there. And Charlotte already has some great, um, wonderful okay. connections. I see. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to, we're going to do that because, you know, we want to, that's part of our mission. It's not only about us. It's about interacting with other musicians. Um, another part of our story is we're working on going into Abbey road. Um, so no that, that's, yeah. So I can't say too much about that yet because it's not all done, but that's, okay. that's, yeah, that's kind of on our, on our, uh, on our mission sheet for this year. So wow. that, that's, that's another, that's another uh, adventure. So, but um, yeah, so that's the deal. I mean, with us, it's not only about us, it's about sharing our music with people that have a similar love for that kind of music. And then also interacting with people that are musicians, people are welcome to message us. We get a lot of messages on our social media as people have heard about the project. And um, yeah, so we're excited. That's basically, that's the, oh my the, goodness. the, the, wow. the, the basic, the crust of it. <laughs> so. okay. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I just like, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I know, you know it's a lot. It's like in the matrix, <laughs> Neo, you know, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's like I said, when people, when people ask me, like, what's going on with you guys? I'm like, there is a lot going on. I, that's actually I'm not even I'm not even saying all of it, but I it's stuff I could talk about. Yeah, so fair, but we're, but we're excited. Yeah. So. yeah. And I mean, this is sort of slotted in between all of the other individual things that each one of you do. I mean, I'm, I, I guess you have a full-time PA secretary and uh, agent <laughs> and, uh, you know, person that runs our, is that, or, or do you do all of this, the two of you, do you just do it all yourself? Well, we're, we're, we're a good team. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. I, man. We, yeah. we complete each other <laughs> very well. Oh, we're, we're, that's really sweet. Very dynamic duo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. da 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 yeah, yeah, and our own doesn't kind of work, does it? I'll, I'll think of something else. But um, so I'm, I'm, I, I want to sort of wrap this up and 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 thank you both. Oh my gosh, you know, um, sharing this wonderful chapter that you started together, and I can assure everybody watching this, knowing them individually i must acknowledge that i know daryl at this point more than charlotta but charlotta is very whizzy wig what you see is what you get a beautiful soul and personality and you can see it in her smile that's her both of them are super authentic because they've been doing this for a long time we've talked about and i've you know, being in the confessional, not the one behind me, but I've been in the confessional myself and said, you know, you get to a point where it's not about affection per se, because that's the bit, that's the final bit that often trips people over. And I'm, 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 I'm sharing this with any younger musician that happens to be watching this. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's not necessary. Just be yourself like these two guys who are totally authentic and real. And the message or messages, because each individual song, the lyrics are beautiful. They're beautifully sung and beautifully performed by all of the musicians, but the core group of Charlotte and Daryl. And remember that right now, because we live in a world where there are 
unfortunately, a lot of challenges and it's difficult to perhaps look towards the future in a positive light. These two individuals, and I'm sure that all of the strays that they connect with will always be like lighthouses, lighthouses. I'm getting emotional <laughs> now, you know, beacons of light um, to help us um, move forward. So my sincere thanks to both of you for this wonderful opportunity to share quality time together. And um, whatever you do, I guess for you, Daryl, it's like, it's bedtime. You know? <laughs> no, I've still got and, lots of practicing to do today. <laughs> okay. And Charlotte, it's another <laughs> cup of tea time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank you so much. And um, I look forward to the continuing story of Charlotte Curbs and the Strays. Goodbye, everybody. Ciao. Bye.